being uh, completely separate from anything going on at the school. And I maintained that for 22 years uh, as a teacher up there. And as I think I mentioned once before, that that was a marvelous, wonderful job. And it was the kind of job that I could hardly wait to get to work every single day. I enjoyed it so much. Then when we got into computers, it was even more exciting. He happened to see me and uh, asked if I'd be interested in coming to Sioux College, which he had started teaching. He had been there for about three years. Because a lot of our time has been spent alone throughout our lives, painting and drawing. And uh, geez, when you have to step in front of a whole bunch of people all of a sudden, you know, you feel, you feel a bit intimidated. And it was a big step for both of us. And um, we taught many subjects in there. Uh, it was a fine arts program going on there, and we taught drawing, painting, sculpturing, design, 3D design, 2D, two-dimensional design. They decided to drop the fine art program, unfortunately, and keep Ken and I. And uh, so we, we kept on going with graphic, des graphic design, and all of a sudden they came to us and said, look it, everything's going computerized. It's not hand done anymore. And we, d we didn't have a clue what a computer was, you know? We had three months to learn computers. Like, you know, it was quite confusing at times, and all we did was read manuals, you know, and spent every night there working on the computers. But it was fantastic. We really got into it. From people who were hands done with, you know, with your brush going like this, to someone on a typewriter, which I could hardly type, you know, when the, when the door opened in September, we were both petrified, <laughs> you know, but everything went and found the students were really good and receptive and uh, we had a good career there. We worked together for uh, pretty near 20 years. When I, be when I started working at Sioux College, uh, it was called the Visual Art Program and there were various majors or I forget what we called them, we called them studios and advertising art was one of them. And Ken McDougall and Ken Bradford both taught in that particular um, area in, uh, in the advertising art. We put in many, many hours, and particularly the two Kens, and Ken McDougall, um, forming what was uh, to become the um, advertising art and graphic design program. We even did the, the, the brochure and everything ourselves rather than having the, um, the marketing program at Sioux College uh, put this together. And it, was a very, it was a real hands-on effort, and uh, we did very well. Actually, the program still exists still doing well. It's all new teachers now, um, but I understand it's doing quite well. The great John Rhodes, he came into the art room and uh, wondered if I could do some ideas for a, a new Greyhound crest. I forget what they had before. Something wasn't all that great. So I, say, I, I did a few samples and John took them to a meeting, I guess. And then he came back the next day and said they want it tomorrow. <laughs> and the Bonsu man, too. There's another little guy that, uh, that I created. And basically, he's circular, a little robust little guy. Too bad he didn't have, um, what do you call it, the copyrights on that. <laughs> My God, he, he could have made a fortune. <laughs> I think, I don't know what he got, $35 or something for the design, or 25 something like that. <laughs> oh, well. These are kind of interesting. They make an interesting show on their own. Old Waterfront, Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. And then more wires. But I'm glad I found these. The one thing is, though, uh, that I've always maintained is, uh, although I was a teacher for 22 years, commercial work, uh, I mean, I was employed by the te local television station for, for 13 years, but behind all of those, I still maintained uh, the fine art work. I still, I never eased up on it. I painted and, and uh, had exhibitions here in the Sioux and elsewhere. So I always kept all of those things going. Uh, when the Centennial Room closed, uh, I had a show there 
uh, which was the last show in the Centennial Room. And strangely, strangely enough, uh, I had the first show there, first show and the last show. I continued doing the work as, as you've already seen, uh, and uh, just piling them up, piling them up. So I figure it's time to have another show. <laughs> what an attitude! Eh? <laughs> no wonder nobody knows about me. You know, Ken Danby used to tell me that. He said, you know, Ken, if you want to be noticed, if you want to get somewhere, you've got to come down here and live down out. You don't have to live in the city of Toronto, but you can live outside, you know, somewhere like I do, you know. And people will come to your studio, and you'll have shows, and you'll get recognition and all that. And I said, oh, yeah, Ken, you're absolutely right. I, I understand totally what you're saying, but what if I just suddenly want to get in my car, and in 20 minutes I'm up on the rocks, and the waves are coming in because it's windy, <laughs> you know. It's not out to be, try to be famous or anything. He just, he just loves to paint and to draw. He, like every place he goes, he carries a sketchbook. He likes to keep to himself, he, his drawings, his paintings, and he just works, paints, draws, puts it in the cupboard like I do, and keeps going. And, uh, I feel like it, it just might be the, the last show that I have, and certainly on this scale. Wow, this is... A, there's going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 90 pieces of work, maybe 100 pieces of work in the gallery in, in both rooms. And, uh, you know, and I've been working on this thing for two and a half years already. And right, uh, right now I'd like to just say it's about time Ken McDougall had a tribute to him, truly to him, because he truly is a painter of the North. He must know every inch of Lake Superior. He's just a beautiful person, quiet, unassuming, very gifted, and please don't miss this show because it's going to be a beauty. It's ex almost exactly three years uh, when I committed myself uh, to Michael Birch, he asked me many times, and then he caught me one time in the other room there, and uh, I said, you know, Michael, I think you're right. And I said, it'll be three years from now. And that was uh, 05. So this is 08. So by timetabling myself over three years, this is the result, right here. Quite a collection, eh? Holy teapot. When I look at these, I haven't seen them for 20 years. You know, it's kind of nice uh, <clears throat> after all those years. Some of them, I kind of forget parts of them. Last show, I have a feeling it probably will be. I, that doesn't mean I'm going to die next week, but uh, it means that to put on a show like this, uh, to put on a lesser show, uh, just wouldn't mean the same. This represents the sum and substance of my art career. It doesn't mean I'm stopping. I could do work on and on and on that could surpass even paintings that are in here. But to this date, this is, this is it. This is what I do, this is what I've done all my life, and this is the result of, I would say, about 60 years of uh, work. If not actually doing it, thinking about it all the time. And if you're thinking about it, you're painting it.
see, the, the, the story goes, Captain Pep does not know, but this German spy called Dr. Hypmotizer, Hypmo, rather than Hypno, so is telling his men to blow up the Brooklyn Bridge, and then it goes on from there, and so he punches this guy out saying, at last I can hit this bald-headed rat. Why, he hit him, and then he says, why, he's melted away. <laughs> and so we end this weird tale. I hope you enjoyed it. The end. <laughs>